odd. I don't know what this is. Some sort of like a smokestack or something on the other side. I don't know what it is, but it's burning or smoldering. This is a giant gate. And uh, you can look right over. I can hear people talking. But I can't see anybody. And I don't know if there's sensors around here, if I'm going to get surrounded with Border Patrol agents very soon. I don't see any out here. I mean, they're all over when you're driving around in the towns, sitting off to the sides. But uh, there are none right here. But you can see, I mean, the wall goes all the way up, seemingly all the way up to those mountains. Hey everyone, so I'm in Texas today, rural Texas. I'm continuing my road trip across the country. And I started thinking, a lot of you might not know what it really looks like near the border of Mexico. Uh, there's a lot of little towns in Texas and New Mexico, Arizona, and in California that are right up against the fence or, or the border. I'm gonna to go to these different states. I'm gonna show you some little towns, some of them where the people live literally right on the wall where the, the, the fence is in their backyard. So I'm gonna show you this starting here in Texas and move along each state. What the heck, I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the U.S.-Mexico border. So this is the town of San Elizario, which is about a half an hour from El Paso, Texas. Obviously there's more to this town than what you're seeing, but this is the neighborhood that's pretty much backed up right to the fence. And then right here is a gate for the border patrol to get through. I guess those gates make it so the border patrol can go on either side and patrol. There's a horse right on the side of the road, eating some grass. I gotta, I gotta tell you, I love the chickens that are around. You can hear the roosters because it's early in the morning. So once I leave here, I'm going to make my way into New Mexico and then make my way into Arizona. And what I want to do is get all the way into California at the very end where the, where the ocean is, the border wall goes right in, the fence goes right into the water. So that's my ultimate destination. So I've made it into New Mexico and I wanted to show you this area. This is Columbus, New Mexico. The border wall is a little different in this area because in this area you can actually see right into the backyards of the Mexico homes. You can hear the chickens. There's a random cat running across the road. Now this area is fairly quiet. People cross from U.S. into Mexico, Mexico into U.S. simply just by walking across. I mean, I'm sure they show credentials, but it's not a major customs area or anything like that. It's very quiet here. But that's not really why I brought you to Columbus. I brought you here because Columbus plays a significant role in the U.S. history because of the 1916 raid where Pancho Villa and a bunch of his men crossed over the border and actually raided and burned the town of Columbus. So that happened just a little ways up the road. So I'm gonna take you there right now. 
So where I just was, the border of Mexico is three miles south from here. And it's this area right here. This is the town where in 1916, in the middle of the night, Pancho Villa and his men came up here and took Camp Furlong and the town by surprise. This overlooks everything. This is really the tallest hill around for miles. It overlooks the town and back this way, this is where Camp Furlong was. So back in 1916, this entire field would have been filled with hundreds and hundreds of white tents. And all around here is where the Columbus raid happened. So ultimately 19 Americans were killed during that raid before the U.S. Army were able to get up, get their guns together, and fight them back into Mexico. And of course, 1916 was a long time ago, and lots of things have changed. And nowadays, to commemorate the Columbus raid, dozens of Mexicans get on their horses and ride across the border where they are greeted by dozens of Americans, and together, they ride up to the town of Columbus, into this area, to celebrate the relationship, the positive relationship, between Mexico and New Mexico. In fact, Columbus's clever slogan is, where old Mexico meets New Mexico. Pretty cool. So this is what the border looks like here in rural Arizona. This is the customs house. Almost just like a regular fence. So this is the almost ghost town of Loquille, Arizona, way out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, I'm 17 miles on a dirt road to get out here. And there's a lot of abandoned buildings out here. This is actually an old abandoned port of entry into Mexico. So as you can see, it's just, it's a lot of these metal or these steel structures and almost like a normal fence. This border crossing was actually closed in 1983, but you can see chains are still on the fence and there's still a sign here that says the hours of operation, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Effective 1978, June 1st, 1978. I've been told there's a lot of border patrol around here, but I haven't seen any. But you can see the horses across, across in New Mexico. The horses are staring at me. Very interesting place. Looks pretty much the same on the Mexico side too. A couple of houses around, but some random turkeys in the woods too. This quiet out of the way port of entry was actually run by a woman named Helen Mills. And every morning, Helen would put up the American flag. She would walk over and unchain this border gate and then she would spend the day checking credentials of people passing through, checking cars. It's pretty impressive. She did it for about 10 years and then it was taken over. And the very interesting thing about her is that she did not speak Spanish. As you can see, it's very, very rural here, very quiet. And honestly, if somebody wanted to climb over this, it'd be very, very easy. But I don't know if this is really an area where people, people like the cross here. I have no idea. I haven't seen any border agents at all. Okay, so the final state to show you is California. I've saved the best for last. It also kind of goes in that order anyway. But uh, this place is very, very interesting. So stay tuned for this. So this is San Diego County, right on the line, actually right over the wall there is uh, Tijuana. This is a very interesting area for a couple different reasons. We were right on the water here, right as the Pacific Ocean meets California, and we are also right next to Tijuana. 
This place right here is called Borderfield State Park, and it's largely abandoned, although you can still come here. One of the reasons why it's abandoned, from what I've heard, is that there is large amounts of sewage water runoff coming from Mexico down into this area, polluting a lot of these little ponds and brooks in the area, and then ultimately it ends up in the ocean. So you don't find people out laying on the beach or certainly not swimming or surfing or anything out here. And also this is kind of a hotbed area for people to cross over at night and hide in these bushes. And because of that, the border patrol is all over this area. So now this is the beach. You can see it's almost completely empty except for just a few people that are walking over to the fence here. This is the end of the fence that separates Mexico and the US. And as you can see, it goes right into the ocean. Now one would wonder, isn't it easy to just wade out there to the end of the fence and make it around? I, it probably is, but that would also explain why there's always border patrol here. And this is what it looks like on the other side. This is uh, Tijuana. People hanging out, normal day. Some vendors on the beach. It's a little chilly to really be in the water, but they're definitely hanging out on the beach. Now, the last time I was here, I don't think that barbed wire was up there, but I could be wrong. As you can see, it's kind of like a double, a double fence. The U.S. side, they really don't want you going beyond that fence on the left-hand side, whereas the actual fence, the actual border wall is right there. Yeah, so upon talking to a couple people that are here, uh, it's not my imagination. I can definitely smell the stench right even on the beach. It's uh, pretty gross. So I hope nobody swims in here because uh, it smells like a porta potty. So this being the end of the border fence, it's a great area for me to end this video. But uh, definitely leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on, on the, the wall on this fence. Let me know your comments on this stench and the contamination here too. It's pretty gross, but I'd like to hear all your ideas and thoughts about this stuff. Let's keep the conversation going. Hope you like this and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching guys.